Today you see a really pretty top and a dress. I have a really special detail on the neckline. Basically an overlap feature that leaves a little cut out just right here in the upper chest. Super easy to put together. Look at this sneak peek. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. A few weeks ago I showed you the Palazzo pants and the Yours Truly flounce tank from Pattern Emporium and they were the first patterns I sewed from that brand and I was very happy. Lots of designers give sneak peeks of what they're working on and what patterns are coming up next and about 10 days ago-ish I got a newsletter, maybe you have too, and it's a new pattern that they released today, just a few hours ago, called the Flossom Top and Dress. What drew me in was that neckline. I really like that overlap on the front that leaves a little open area here on the upper chest. And it's something that I'd wanted to hack onto a normal t-shirt for ages. I just hadn't gotten around to doing it. I've seen this style around in ready to wear. I think it's really pretty. I was excited to see a pattern that was already made like this and I was just waiting for the release day so I could buy the pattern. I got up really early today. I bought the pattern, printed it out, all those things. And I've made two versions. It's super easy and fast to put together. So the flossum can be either a top or a dress. The most important feature is what you see in the front. The front is composed of two pieces, a smaller piece on the top that overlaps over the bottom. That cutout feature, those pieces of fabric are either finished with bands or binding. The neckline is higher so that there is a piece of fabric between here and the cutout there. I think it's really pretty. You can choose different types of sleeves. There are two fits for the sleeve. One that is an easy fit, it's a little more relaxed and has a bit more room on the bicep and there's a cap sleeve and a short sleeve version there. And then the other sleeve is a fitted sleeve and there you'll find all the lengths. With that one you can also add a little flounce to the short sleeve and I just had enough to cut that out so I actually added it onto one of my tops. It's a fitted design. For the top, you have a little bit of positive ease at the hips. For the dress, you have a bit of negative ease. If you're doing the dress at the back, there is a separate bodice waist, but only at the back, and I think that's great for shaping. And it's sometimes what I've had to do with other dresses that don't have that seam there. It just shapes the lower back so much better easier to fix the sway back as well and the length of the dress can be several mini knee long and the top also has two lengths one regular and one long version the back piece on the skirt you can choose whether you want to cut it on the fold or make a seam on it and there's a little line on the pattern piece that you can fold away if you want to cut it on the fold there's no shaping there but it is an option sometimes it helps you save fabric when you click into the Pattern Emporium website, like you can see here, on the top you'll see this little purple timer that tells you how long the sale has left. It will tell you the hours, so you know. And if you click on here where the pattern release is, you can click there and find a page full of the patterns that are 15% off for the release. So that will include the new pattern, the Flossum, and then other patterns that could go with this one, or there are features in there that can be mashed into this one. So really cool, lots of patterns for you to see. I've already made a video about the Palazzo pants, which is one of the patterns there, 15% off. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below in the description box if you'd like to use it to get any pattern. I make a little commission from there and it doesn't cost you any extra when you purchase but a little bit of that comes back to me as a way to support the work that I do here on YouTube. Now about fabric, it is designed for neat fabrics. You need fabrics that stretch quite a nice amount both ways, both horizontally and vertically. Horizontally at least 60%, vertically around 30%. And the designer is really specific about the types of fabrics that will work and won't work. And it's all got to do with the shoulder and sleeve fit and this area fitting correctly and not pulling. So you might have a heavier fabric that might have the desired stretch, but the way that the fabric is weaved is more tight, is more structured, has more compression those aren't going to work. The ones that are going to work better are the ones that drape, have a soft hand, that do have that nice stretch, but it's that type of soft stretch that doesn't have that compression. And that's where you usually find the lighter weight knits like rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, modal spandex, ITY, double brush poly, single brush poly, those types of fabrics. And the ones that she doesn't recommend are heavier athletic knits, swim fabrics, Ponty, Liverpool, Scuba, as well as cotton lycra or cotton spandex. Those are the ones that she doesn't recommend. So this is where I'm bending a little bit the rules here because my fabrics are in the list of non-recommended ones. But I think they have the hand that you need. I think they don't have that compression. They have that 
soft feel and the drape that's required although they are athletic knits they're not the heavy ones that I would use for leggings or something like that so I think you just have to feel I've seen some swim fabrics that are also lighter weight and just softer feeling and that don't have that compression that others do now all these are the lightweight fabrics that I mentioned like ITY all of those I would always wear a tight fitting slip underneath I wouldn't want to wear a lightweight knit dress that's fitted just in a single layer because this is a newer pattern it's got a better size range than some of the older patterns so this one's available in sizes 4 to 30 Australian Australian sizing is equivalent to UK sizing in the numbers and size charts very similar and it's very different to US sizing so in US sizing it would be equivalent to 0 to 26 just look at your measurements look at the high bust the full bust choose what number you're in and you'll be fine in this pattern, I'm a size 18 Australian, that would be equivalent to a 14 US. And the largest size, he goes up to a hip of 58 and a half inches. In the pattern, apart from the body measurements chart where you choose your size from, there are also other charts, finished measurement charts, but they are mainly to do with length, how long the sleeves are, how long the skirts are, how long the top is, that sort of thing. But I don't see finished measurements of the bust, waist and hips, that sort of thing. Although I know that this is a fitted dress, there is negative ease here at the bust, the waist and the hips. I just don't know how much it is. <laughs> but I'm trusting that if I chose the right size, I'm going to get the intended fit, which is a fitted dress, which is what I want because I like dresses like this. The sewing segment is very short and very sweet, very simple. And it's mainly got to do with how to put this neckline together, how to sew on these bands, how to do that overlap, how to do that section. And also I'm showing you a little bit about that extra little flounce that goes on the short sleeves that I was able to sew because I had enough fabric, so let's see. That is the small piece that will overlap over that one and create that cutout effect on the upper chest area. This is the fitted sleeve and I've got the short sleeve there. On this one, you can add on this little flounce. So that's what that is. I've got two of them there. It's a little full circle flounce. And these are the bands that will finish the neckline and that area there. There are pieces slightly narrower for you to do binding. It achieves the same purpose. It's just to finish all the neckline area. The one on top there is for the neckline. This one here is for this long area right there, the upper piece. And this shorter one will finish this shorter edge right there. There's also the option of doing a sleeve that has a little bit more ease on the bicep and you can choose a cap sleeve and a short sleeve there. But if you want long, long sleeves, then it's on this one, the fitted sleeve right there. These are the pieces for the dress, very similar to the top. We have the smaller upper piece and then the one that goes on the bottom and it's just a full piece on the front, cut on the fold, both of these pieces. The back bodice is shorter, there is a waist seam and that's awesome, it provides shaping and it's just easier to correct sway back and just back bodice length fitting issues. And then the skirt goes separate. You have an option of cutting a seam on the skirt or folding away that little bit of seam allowance and sewing it on the fold. I've just got it on the fold here, I have my short sleeve and my and these are the bands, the same as for the top. Of course you can do long sleeves as well. This is the top part of the front, you need to mark where the centre front is there. I've got it marked with a little pen and now this is the band piece for this section. I had also marked the centre there and all you need to do is fold it lengthwise together like any band and put them right sides together, matching these fronts right here. The edge of this band needs to hang off by 3 8 from the side. It will be trimmed off later. Put up a little pin right there. And now the band is slightly shorter than what you're sewing it to, like any band. And so when you're serging these together, you would be stretching the band slightly to meet the bottom, not stretching out the bottom, of course. And the same here on this other side. We have the edge of the band hanging off by 3 8 of an inch right there on the edge. And this will be the exact same process that we do on the bottom part of the front. So I have that ready to be surged together. I'll be doing the top with a serger mainly. The seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, which is what you get with a serger. Here is the bottom bit that goes on the front, and this is where you would put the other band. And I've got the band right there. I've also got the center front mark there, center 
marked on the band right here so I can match it up. And I've chosen to do the band because I think it's a nice and clean finish. And also this band will be hanging off by 3 8 on the side. And the band will always be shorter because this is what is going to bring the garment close to the chest. Like any band, neck band, any band that you sew on anywhere, it's always going to be a little bit shorter than the area you're sewing it onto. So now this is just ready to be searched. We'll go ahead and do that. And I'll just stretch the band slightly on the top to meet what's underneath. You could also do this on your machine with a shallow zigzag at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that's how that's going to finish. Then the seam allowance can be pressed down and you need to top stitch right there. I'll repeat on the other one, the same for both. You can top stitch in many ways. If you have a cover stitch, I'm just going to top stitch and just sew on the edge. And I am going to be using a straight stitch for this. I've never had problems with stitches popping or anything like that. I'm using my blind hem presser foot with the needle to the left and that helps me sew on the edge really neatly. That's how that looks when it's top stitched on the edge and it's really neat. It still stretches with everything and on the back it's going to lie super flat. And this is the same for both sides of the cutout. Bands are sewn in the same way. I've given my bands a good press on this bottom front section. Here there's a partial armhole and you'll find a little notch there marked in blue. I've, mar I've got that marked on both sides. That's important. Place this one here. Now get your smaller piece that will go on top. And now on this armhole there, there's also a little notch there. That notch needs to ma match the one that I showed you underneath. So there's going to be an overlap in this area. So I'll just put a pin through my single notch on the top front little piece and make sure the pin is matching the notch underneath right there. And then we have this armhole that is going to match the rest of the armhole there. So there will be a double layer of armhole in this area. And on the side, we're going to have this. Remember we had that extra, it doesn't matter, just align the sides and then we're going to trim off that excess. So that's the top of the side seam. It's got this overlapping on the top and do the same for the other side. Find that single notch. It's going to help you attach the sleeve later, but also overlap this and match it to the one here. Match this armhole. And this is how this is going to overlap that one. When this gets worn, that will create that little cutout and a bit of skin showing on the upper chest. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hold these in place. I'm gonna use a long stitch length right on the edge just to hold it in place so it doesn't move. And then this can just act as one piece. I'm gonna start sewing that little side seam there together. Seam allowance for the garment is a quarter of an inch, so I'm sewing with a smaller seam allowance than that, and I'm using a 5.0 stitch length, and the same on this other side. Okay, now I can trim off this excess that we had left intentionally with the bands, and right here as well, trim this away. So from the wrong side, you can clearly see what's going on here. <laughs> this piece goes over the other one so the small piece is on top of the other and there's an overlap right there that includes the armhole and part of the side seam. The way I sew, I'm going to put the back on top, do the shoulder seams, I'm going to do the side seams and then put my sleeve on the round. These are the little sleeve flounces, they're basically little circles. This is what's going to be sewn to the bottom of the short sleeve. I have already hemmed this with a twin needle. I didn't use a big hem allowance, it's about 3 8 to maybe half an inch. You can't really do more in a circle and have a neat finish. So that's already hemmed and twin needled. Look, the reason I'm having this is because the wrong side of my fabric is white and on a flounce you can see that. You can see the white if you don't hem it. But if this would have been just a black background for example, I would have just cut it really neatly and left it and not hemmed it and I think it would have draped nicer. And on my flounce, I had marked a little line of the grain line there and there. That's the grain line when I cut it out of the of the knee. So I'm going to match one of these to the seam there and then just match the whole way around. So that's the bottom of my short sleeve and I'm going to put them right sides together, matching one of those little grain line marks here on my sleeve seam. This flounce is drafted to match exactly the bottom of the fitted sleeve not the easy fit sleeve. So if you're doing the wider sleeve, the one that has more room on the bicep, the flounce is not going to fit there. If you had sewn your sleeve on the flat, you would have the whole garment to deal with when attaching this flounce at the very end. Because I'm sewing my sleeve on the round, I can do it separately and just pin it, have the flounce sewn on, and then I can sew my sleeve in into the garment.
Uh, one thing I was worried about was about not showing too much cleavage. I'd been following along on the Pan Emporium Facebook group where during the week a lot of the testers post their versions. And it's really helpful to see different body types and shapes and the types of fabrics and how some patterns look on other people. They you know, can look really different on a lot of people. And having a bit of a larger chest, I was worried that I was going to be showing cleavage, which is something that I never want to do. I, it's just not my style. I don't feel comfortable that way. I've never felt comfortable showing cleavage ever. It's not my thing. So I like a nice deep neckline, but just up to here, not, not showing anything. I did see a lot of people that had a larger chest that weren't showing cleavage and I did see others that were. I think it might be due to just the way the bust is shaped and the type of bra I use, I'm not sure. But I took the plunge and got the pattern anyway, hoping to give it a go and maybe thinking I could adjust something if I was going to show cleavage. I was very happy when I tried on my first one that I wasn't showing anything. <laughs> it's awesome because you have that little sliver of skin showing up here, but it, I'm not showing anything at all. So I'm very satisfied with that. And that's why I decided to make the dress afterwards. So you might have seen this fabric before. I've made a dress with this fabric. I had a little bit left that was just enough for this top. I had basically sh zero like shreds left of this fabric. I call this almost zero waste sewing, although I'm not using zero waste patterns. I am using my fabrics up to like everything. So there you can see the neckband on the top. I top stitched it the same way you saw me top stitch these bands. When you see this garment on the hanger like this, this opening here looks bigger than it is than when you're actually wearing it on the body. Because this width here is going to pull this that way and it's going to keep it all nice and flat. So this cutout won't be as big as you see it right here without a body inside. <laughs> so easy to put together, the little flounce is super cute. You know, I hemmed this because the wrong side of my fabric is white and I didn't want that to show. So I had to hem it and it does poke out a little bit, but it's super cute. I'm glad I had just enough fabric to cut that little detail. I think it's a really cute detail. And I was happy to do it with this fabric that's really lightweight, so nice. With the lengths of the tops, there is a regular length and a longer length. I cut the regular length. This hits my mid hip and it's usually how I like my tops. I like showing you these garments with white on the other side because you can really see what's going on. Here you can see that overlap right there. So there was a notch that matches that one to this one and then the same notch matches the sleeve, the single notch. So it's really easy to put this together. There's no way to go wrong like that. There's also an option of sewing bindings instead of bands. But I decided that the bands were easier to sew and just as nice, so why not? <laughs> that's it, that's how the top looks, super simple. Let's see it on outside. Here is my first Flossom top. This is a size 18 Australian. I did the regular length. There is a longer length for this one and I've got the fitted short sleeve with a little flounce there. Super cute, love that detail. And from far away, you can't really see the cutout or the neckline details, you see that up close. Up closer, you can see that the top has a little bit of positive ease at the hips, it's not hugging the hips but it's not a loose fit either. It's really nice and fitted at the waist. Everywhere, it's a really nice top. And up higher, you can see this neckline. I'm really happy I'm not showing anything. I'm just showing skin on the upper chest. My bra is very well tucked on each side. I don't have any issue with showing my bra there. I was worried about that, but I'm very happy with the look, even though this neckline is higher than what I'm used to. You know, that cut out of skin at the upper chest breaks it up and makes it look really pretty. I've never had a garment with this detail and I always wanted to have one and I'm very very happy with this make. thing here I'm not sure what it is but it's green all year but now that it's spring it's starting to have these lovely purple flowers expect to see more videos filmed here because I think it's so pretty for my second garment I made the dress because I wanted to make a top and a dress this is an athletic knit it's not a lightweight knit it's a medium weight knit but I'll show you the stretch is not compressive you know I think it's appropriate and it has more than the required stretch for the garment the print is really really bold <laughs> Let's just say it's very bold, but it's very me. I love these pink and turquoise aqua tones with a little bit of coral and black in there. It's so pretty. With this one, I just have the regular sleeve. This one, the flounce, no, it's, 
it, it wouldn't have been good for the flounce because this fabric is heavier as you can see the flounce would have just been sticking out like that and I didn't want that so it's just simple everything else is the same I've sewn everything with the bands I've top stitched it on the edge very neatly and it's just the same as sewing a top the only difference is that with the dress you have an extra seam here at the back so there's a back bodice separately and then the skirt and that helps with the shaping so so good I mean it fits amazing what I wanted to show you was the stretch of this fabric it stretches really well but it's not compressive it has great recovery but it's not that type of compressive tight weave you know that other athletic knits have that's why I thought this was going to be perfect and actually the shoulders or the upper chest everything feels amazing feels really nice and soft so I think you could bend the rules with the fabric Joyce just make sure that you feel uh, your fabric that it's not really structured and it has that compression that is like boom you know so I thought this one was still going to work there was nothing different in the sewing with this one than with the other one in actual fact, this one was faster because the flounce took quite a while to hand baste that hem before twin needling and stuff, which I didn't do with this one. So this is how this one looks inside. Very pretty. I've got a twin needle hem at the bottom, everything sewn with a serger. Even though I take my time with sewing and I'm, I'm, I think I'm quite accurate, this one didn't take more than an hour to make which is amazing and I'm very happy with this dress. I've always liked these styles. There's something about them that always pulls me in and it's basically that I can have a beautiful dress like this in just over a yard of fabric, which is amazing. Probably used 1.2 meters for this one, which is a really nice amount for a dress like this. And these dresses go really well and the things you can layer something sheer on top if you don't want to be that exposed. They look great under denim jackets. I think they're always very pretty. Let's see this one outside. Just basic styling, you know, just some shoes. Here's my Flossom dress. This is a size 18 in an athletic knit. It's not a really heavy athletic knit and it's got a soft hand. It stretches and recovers well, but it doesn't really have that much compression. So I thought it was awesome. I have the fitted short sleeve. My neckline is finished with bands. The length I've chosen for myself is between the mini and the knee length. It is a fitted silhouette. I don't have a center back seam on this skirt. And I'm very happy with the fit of this neckline that I can wear it comfortably and not be worried about showing my bra or cleavage or anything like that I know I'm gonna be nice and comfortable and wearing a super nice different detail like this I really like this style and I feel amazing especially in a print like this Now there is one little way that you can customize this area. If you try it on and your straps are very thick or something and the little bit of strap shows there, in the pattern you'll find instructions where you can just tack this down. Like put it on with your favorite bra, find out the position it needs for the bra not to show, put a pin there and then you can tack that down permanently and then you won't need to worry about your straps showing. You know, everyone wears different types of straps. Some are really, really thick and there is a, a chance that yours might want to show there on the side. Mine don't, but yours might. And the pattern has included that in the instructions because it's something that can happen, you know, life and bras. In the last part of the pattern instructions, it's really fun because it shows you how to do several hacks, like making one that's cropped with a hem band, making a little shrug, mashing it with other patterns from Pattern Emporium, mashing it with several patterns that have a bishop sleeve that will work with this armhole. All you would need to do is take that bishop sleeve and put it on this one. So it's a dress that you can make different in a lot of ways with other patterns. When you look at Pattern Emporium's website, every time they release a new pattern, they also have other patterns there that are also 15% off. Usually the ones that are going to be mashable with this one. So have a look. I'll leave you a link in my description box so you can see what the other patterns are that are on sale. Don't forget that the Flossom and other patterns as well are 15% off. Australian time, Sunday night, I believe. There's about three days left of the sale if you want to take advantage and I'll leave you my affiliate link down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me a little while and I'll see you again very soon with more sewing.
拜。